Welcome! If you are watching this video, you are likely registered to submit a traditional WPE portfolio in June 2024. This is the June 2024 WPE workshop for the reading set topic, Parasocial Relationships. My name is Betsy Gomez and I am the Associate Director of the Writing Proficiency Program. Program Coordinator Rose Mooney will be joining me in this presentation. Please make sure to bookmark our website, which is www.umb.edu WPE. Our website houses some helpful content, such as the detailed WPE portfolio requirements, grading criteria, our schedule, and copies of resources like the grid notes and these PowerPoint slides. You may also book quick question or hold release appointments via the link on our website's main page. We've designed this short workshop so you can familiarize yourself with the WPE grading standards and portfolio requirements. We will go over the submission process and the submission schedule. We will take some time to offer advice on how to write a successful essay. This will include a discussion on what kind of essay to write, how to incorporate and give credit to sources, and how to make sure you are answering the essay prompt. Finally, we'll model how you can use an organizational tool like our grid notes to create an index of important quotes and make sure your challenge essay effectively engages with your sources. It's helpful to familiarize yourself with the criteria for the WPE because these are the grading standards that will be used to grade your submission. This criteria was created by the faculty at UMass Boston and is directly related to the aims of the general education program. According to the general education program, writing proficiency involves critical thinking, critical reading, and elements of writing. These capabilities are demonstrated within an essay by the following criteria. The first criteria, writing with a clear purpose. The second criteria, effectively utilizing source material, and the third criteria of organization. Keep in mind that you are not expected to write a perfect essay. The graders expect your essay to demonstrate intermediate proficiency in writing. This means that the WPE is not a spelling or grammar exam. You are being graded on whether your essay clearly answers the essay prompt, on whether you engage with and utilize your sources in a way that supports your answer to the prompt, and on whether your essay is organized in a clear and understandable manner. It is very important that you write an essay that shows your thinking and point of view. We'll continue to remind you about this throughout the workshop. It's that important. WPE challenge essays are graded on a scale of one through nine. Developing essays earn scores between one and three, proficient essays earn scores between four and six, and exemplary essays earn scores between seven and nine. To pass the WPE, your essay must earn a score of four or higher from two different graders. Course papers provide a supporting role. Graders may consult them to assist with difficult grading decisions. For example, if your challenge essay is strong in the areas of focus and organization, but not as strong in source use, the graders may look at your course papers to see if they demonstrate proficiency in this category. Writing with a clear purpose involves having a sustained focus on a position, argument, or inquiry. Your position, argument, or inquiry are determined by what you think, usually in response to a prompt or assignment. Proficient essays may clearly state a position and sustain focus on the position throughout. In the case of your challenge essay, you should focus on answering the prompt on page one of the parasocial relationships reading set. The prompt asks, in what ways can parasocial relationships impact our actions and values? How can parasocial relationships be a positive force and how can they be a negative influence? Your challenge essay should be focused on answering this question. Effectively utilizing source material involves carefully selecting, integrating, and explaining source material and meaningfully applying that material in service of an essay's purpose. Effective use of sources means moving beyond summarizing the ideas in the texts and towards meaningful engagement with those texts. 
Proficient essays contextualize and explain the source material, and in addition, they reflect an adequate and sufficient analysis of sources in service of your essay's purpose. The source material you need to use for the June WPE Challenge essay are the three readings in the June WPE reading set. Please do not include any sources that are not in the reading set. Do not do any outside research, just use what's in the reading set. Organization guides the audience from paragraph to paragraph with effective transitions and coherent paragraphs. Organization indicates awareness of your reader's need to be guided through the flow of your ideas. Proficient essays utilize a clear global structure and utilize paragraph breaks and include easy to follow transitions. Proficient essays also contain paragraphs which have a clear purpose that is connected to the essay's overall argument. The current requirements for a WPE portfolio are a challenge essay of 1500 words or longer and three course papers. One course paper must be 1250 words or longer. The other two course papers can be 750 words or longer. If you are a first semester transfer student, meaning you transferred in the spring 2024 semester, you are allowed to submit two course papers. One paper should be 1250 words or longer and the other paper can be 750 words or longer. All students submitting a WPE portfolio must write a challenge essay answering the WPE prompt. This is absolutely required. Finally, you will be given a link to the confirmation form closer to the submission deadline. The confirmation form includes an honesty statement and a brief survey. All course papers submitted in your WPE portfolio should come from courses you took at UMass Boston. You are allowed to submit two papers from your intermediate seminar or CRW 282. You should include at least one paper from a course that is at a 200 level or higher. Your papers should utilize sources since that is one of the grading criteria. A source can be anything from a journal article, book, lecture, or work of art. All papers should be analytical and present an argument. This means that personal narratives and reflections or creative writing pieces like short stories or poems are not appropriate. With advanced approval, you may be able to submit a paper based on observation, like a lab report or case study. Please email your candidate papers to us at writing.proficiency at umb.edu and we will take a look at them. You can also email us if you're second guessing whether or not your papers are appropriate to include in your portfolio or if you don't think you have enough or any course papers to submit. We'll be happy to help you and we want you to submit your portfolio. Whether you started your studies at UMass Boston this spring, three years ago, 10 years ago, etc., everyone needs to submit a challenge essay based on the WPE reading set and prompt. We will not grade any WPE portfolios that do not include the challenge essay. When you register for the WPE, you receive an email confirmation, which includes a link to access the reading set and the prompt. If you can't find this message, send us an email and we will make sure you have the reading set. Portfolios will be submitted through Blackboard. By May 30th, you will begin to have access to the WPE Blackboard course, which is CAS 015. You will have until 11.59 p.m. on June 5th to submit your portfolio. We will grade portfolios from June 11th to 13th and will email WPE results after 5 p.m. on Friday, June 14th. If you, if you receive a pass result, this means that you have completed the WPE. If you receive a retake result, it means that the WPE graders did not find that your submission met the grading criteria. If you do receive a retake, please make sure to sign up for retake counseling, which will take place from June 17th through the 24th. During your retake counseling appointment, you will meet with a faculty member via Zoom to go over your result and review the graders' comments on your portfolio. You will also have the opportunity to revise your essay using the feedback from your retake counselor. Revisions are due a week after your counseling appointment and are only accepted if you meet with a retake counselor first. Revisions will be graded by new faculty members. 
If your revision attempt is not found to be proficient, you will need to attempt the WPE again. The next WPE will be for an October 2024 submission, with registration opening on our website in mid-September. We are now moving on to the advice portion of our workshop. These are just a few tips to keep in mind as you start working on your WPE challenge essay. The most important component of a WPE challenge essay is your own thinking. If you don't express your ideas and provide logical support for your own ideas, you will not pass the WPE. Remember that the grading standards, focus, source use, and organization are all tied to your own thinking. Our first pieces of advice include a few do's and don'ts. Our first don't is don't write a report. Do write an essay. Do use the reading set sources, but don't oversummarize. Do engage with the sources, though. Finally, whether you quote, summarize, or paraphrase, do give credit when you're using someone else's ideas or words. Always give credit. We will break down this advice in more detail in the next couple of slides. The main difference between a report and an essay is that a report may have a lot of summary and is meant to inform the audience about something. An essay has a small amount of summary. In an essay, the writer's goal is to persuade the audience that their argument is correct or important. You are the writer here, and your goal is to convince your readers. In an essay, you will take a position and present an argument that is supported by information and logic. As mentioned earlier, your own thinking is essential. The graders want to know what you think. It is important to answer the question as soon as possible, ideally in the first paragraph. Your position or thesis statement is important because it is the heart of your essay. Our prompt is, in what ways can parasocial relationships impact our actions and values? How can parasocial relationships be a positive force? And how can they be a negative influence? Your possible answer might look like this. Parasocial relationships can impact our actions and values in the following ways which would directly address the first part of the question. Our participation in these types of relationships can be a positive or negative force by, which directly addresses the second part of the question. This example sets up the answer to the prompt, which will encourage you to answer both parts of the question. You will clearly address both how parasocial relationships can change what we care about and how we act, and how these changes can either be positive or negative or both. What is the question asking you to do? Pay close attention to the question, in what ways can parasocial relationships impact our actions and values? How can parasocial relationships be a positive force? And how can they be a negative influence? When you are breaking down the question, consider its different parts. In what ways can parasocial relationships impact our actions and values? You might ask yourself how or why might engaging in parasocial relationships change the way we conduct ourselves in real life? Or how and why might a parasocial relationship change the things we care about? How can parasocial relationships be a positive force and how can they be a negative influence? You might ask yourself, how can engaging in parasocial relationships allow us to change our lives for the better? How can these relationships change our lives in a negative way? Your essay will need to go into all of these parts of the question in detail, using the reading set material to support your answer. This doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything in the reading set. You can certainly argue against one or more of the sources. Just make sure to explain why you disagree. The WPE graders will be familiar with the reading set, so you don't need to summarize it in detail. Instead, use the reading set material to expand on your own argument. Here's an example of what that can look like. Parasocial relationships can impact our lives and values by providing examples for us to relate to that increase our confidence in who we are as individuals 
and might lead to relationship and community building. Angela Haupt confirms this when she writes that parasocial relationships can help form an identity and develop autonomy. And she goes on to say that feeling attached to a celebrity or character can also create a sense of comfort. She backs this up by providing evidence of the online communities based on similar celebrity interests that people relied on during COVID-19. This claim is further evidenced by Scott Parrott, Andrew C. Billings, Samuel D. Hak Hakim, and Patrick Gentile, who found that fans provided support and advice to DeMar DeRozan and Kevin Love, two athletes struggling with mental health issues. In doing so, fans created an online community to discuss mental health issues in a safe way that challenged stigmatization. The fans bonded over the discussion that was sparked by their parasocial relationship to the celebrities, and this discussion ended up benefiting all members of the online community who wished to learn more about mental health or talk about it more openly. Despite all the benefits that parasocial relationships offer fans, they can also affect fans' lives negatively if they don't feel like they are accepted by the rest of the fandom. In The Unbearable Whiteness of Taylor Swift's Fandom, Jenna Mahale discusses how many Taylor Swift fans ascribe, to a white, ascribe a white cultural importance to her, and in doing so, silence or even ostracize fans who do not ascribe to what they think her fandom should look like. Mahale also states that while Swift speaks up about many perceived issues, she has not addressed this discrimination of some of her fans by her white fans. Because of this, Mahale argues, we need to understand that while it is okay to be a fan of Taylor Swift and participate in fandom more generally, not everyone's experience as a fan will be the same or even positive. Mahale's piece asks us to think more critically about the impact fandom has on people and recognize the benefits do not mean that parasocial relationships are universally positive experiences. Note that this example uses the reading set material with some summary, but also directly engages with the material using quotes and paraphrases to explain a main idea. The final sentence echoes back to the prompt, which shows focus. It is important that the graders can differentiate between your ideas and those of the authors of the reading set. This means that you should be careful and make sure to cite when you use someone else's ideas. When you use summary, you briefly spell out the main points of something. When you paraphrase, you reword someone else's statement. A direct quotation is taken directly from the text. Here are a few examples of what summary, direct quotes, and paraphrases can look like. The grid notes are a tool that you can use in the reading, drafting, and editing stages of your writing process. You can use them to make an index of important ideas and quotes in the reading set, and make sure you're engaging with all the sources in the reading set. The grid notes can help you create an index of important ideas in the reading set. You can see that the student has filled out the page numbers where they believe these ideas are discussed. It can be useful to keep an index as it might make it easier for you to see connections and differences between the readings and will also help you select quotes that you can include in your essay. You can use the grid notes to try to synthesize the sources. This means that instead of using the sources separately, you can use them together to support your own argument. Please don't overlook the resources available to you this WPE cycle. We will hold reading labs through May 10th, with more dates to be added throughout the June WPE cycle. Tutoring is available from now through June 4th. We offer both in-person and remote or Zoom appointments. On June 3rd and June 4th, we will offer draft reviews. When you sign up for a draft review, you are reserving a staff member's time. You will not be meeting with a tutor one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, you will send us your essay draft before your appointment time, and your tutor will email you feedback. The link to sign up for draft reviews will be sent via email in our weekly update on May 31st. This concludes the June 2024 WPE workshop.
If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us via email. We will answer you as soon as we can. Good luck with the writing process.